Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org. And last summer, I got an email from Western Digital telling me to immediately unplug one of my external hard drives. There was a security problem, they said, and the drives were vulnerable to attack. The same day, I saw stories posted all around the internet about drives being wiped clean en masse. It was a big problem. I was lucky, my drive was fine, but my brother-in-law, Kevin, was not so lucky. His drive, with all of his family photos and videos from the past decade or so, was maliciously formatted, and all of his data was lost. Rather than sending his drive out for recovery, Kevin decided to let me try out some file recovery software on the drive instead, and that's what we'll be looking at today. Four different recovery software companies have been kind enough to work with me on this project, and these are the software applications that we'll be comparing. I'll be looking at Disk Drill Professional, EaseUs Data Recovery Wizard, Stellar Data Recovery Professional, and Wondershare Recoverit. So let me say from the start that these companies gave me copies of this software to test, but that's it. This is not sponsored, there's no editorial oversight, and I'm not an affiliate. I don't get any kickbacks of any sort. This is an unbiased review. So let's get started. Before anything else, these Western Digital MyBook Live drives are not technically just external drives. They're actually network-attached storage. So in order to scan it to recover the data, the hard drive needs to be removed from its case and connected directly to the computer where you have the recovery software installed. And that is probably the most difficult part of this entire process. To get the drive out of the MyBook Live, you need to break it out of the case until it's just a bare drive like this. Then you plug it into your computer. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can put the drive into a USB enclosure or dock and plug that USB cable into your computer. I installed the drive inside my computer, and since I already have a lot of drives in there, this one is my new H drive. So let's see how easy these recovery programs are to use. After all, none of these programs are going to help anyone if a photographer can't figure out how to use it. With EaseUs, I just launch the app, and that brings up a list of my drives. As I said, the one that I just added is H, so I'll hover over that, and I get the scan option that appears. And I click that, and it starts scanning. That's it. There are no other options to select at this point, no choices to make, no technical details. That seems about as user-friendly as I could reasonably expect. Once it has finished scanning, it gives me this list of files that it has found on the drive on the left here. There's also a preview of some of the types of image files, which is handy. Anyway. I'm going to check the box at the top to select everything and recover all of it. When I press the Recover button, it'll ask me where I want to save the recovered files, and in this case, I'll put them on another external drive, which is my G drive. But you can use any place that isn't on the drive that you're recovering from and has the open space. It'll take some time to copy all of that data over, but otherwise, that's it. The process is complete. Now, let's move on to Wondershare Recoverit. Once Recoverit is open, we see that the user interface looks a lot like EaseUs. In fact, it looks suspiciously like it. If we hover over the drive options, we get the same type of blue scan option, okay? Again, no big choices to make here, except for what you want to scan. I'll select the drive H again and start scanning. It scans, and when it's complete, it allows me to select which files I want to keep over here in the left pane. I'll save all of them again. I select the location to save them, and that's it. Now let's take a look at Disk Drill. Disk Drill isn't quite as user-friendly to start off with as EaseUs and Wondershare with their big simple icons, 
but it's not bad either. I get a list of drives attached to my computer, but I don't get drive letters for each drive, so I have to know that the drive I just connected is a two terabyte drive attached by SATA rather than USB, or start clicking on these little triangles to see what's underneath. It's no big deal, but it's not as easy as it could be. You also get a menu here asking what type of scan you want to do. And you can choose to do a quick scan or a deep scan or just look for lost partitions. But I want to do everything. So I'm leaving it as all recovery methods. And it starts working. Eventually, it'll finish scanning and it'll give you the option to save the scan results, which means that if you decide to only recover a little bit of the data right now, you'll be able to come back in the future and load these scan results without scanning the whole drive again. And you can pick up where you left off. I'll save the scan, but I'm going to recover everything and save it to my G drive again. And again, it starts saving, and eventually it finishes, and that's that. Again, pretty easy. Now, let's take a look at Stellar. Stellar starts out by asking what types of files I want to recover. I'm going to say everything. From there, I choose which locations I want to scan, and here I'll choose H, and then down here in the corner, it gives me the option of a deep scan, which I will turn on, and then I will start the scan. It starts out with a higher level scan and things look similar to the other programs with an estimate of three or four hours for the scan to complete in the first phase. But once I get to phase six, it starts claiming that the scan will require 18 hours to complete. Luckily, a couple of hours later, that estimate has dropped to only three and a half hours more. And ultimately it completed in six hours and 13 minutes. Anyway, once the scan is complete, I can preview JPEG files if I want, but again, I'm going to check all of the boxes on the left-hand pane here and recover everything. I'm saving it all to my G drive. Again, pretty simple. So if I were going to rank these for ease of use, I'd say that EaseUs and Wondershare are equally easy to use, so they're tied in first place. Stellar is also pretty easy, but it does have options like the deep scan, which you might not notice at first, so I suppose it's in a very close second place. Disk drill is also quite easy if you know anything about computers, but it does not have the kind of interface that I'd feel confident that my grandparents could navigate, so I'm dropping it into fourth place. Now, what did they all recover? Disk Drill found about 141,000 files. EaseUs found about 134,000. Stellar found only about 74,000. And Wondershare about 96,700. So as you can see, Disk Drill found the highest number of files, nearly twice as many as Stellar. But Disk Drill only found 289 gigabytes of data, while EaseUs found the largest volume of data. In fact, at 466 gigabytes, it's more than twice as much as Wondershare's Recoverit, which recovered 209 gigabytes. Stellar found nearly as much as EaseUs with 458. But of course, it's not even that simple. We need to see whether the recovered files are actually any good. So let's investigate the quality of this recovered data a bit. Here you can see the number of JPEGs recovered by each program and how much disk space they use. Most of the images on this drive were in JPEG format, and while I'd like to compare these programs' performance there, there's a problem I've run into. The original file names for all of these pictures are lost and can't be recovered, and there are too many photos to compare the collections manually. The only automated way to do this, I think, is to use software that's designed to look for duplicate photos. This one is called Anti-Twin. But I started searching the results from two of these programs about 30 hours ago, and the scan is less than 1% complete. 
Based on some tests of smaller collections of files, my estimate is that this will take about three months for the comparison to complete. So we're gonna have to skip a full analysis of JPEGs here and start with something a little more manageable. If we look at how many MP4 video files were covered by each program, this is what we find. Disk Drill found 21 files, Ease Us found nine, Stellar found 21, and Wondershare also found 21. However, it's pretty quick and easy to play these 21 files or so from each recovery program to make sure that they work, and most of them don't. So, if we pare this down to only files that actually work, then in each folder, there are only seven videos totaling 4.74 gigabytes. All of the programs give us the same number of working files and use the same amount of disk space. However, programs like Stellar and Disk Drill are saving corrupt files, and that gives us the opportunity to use video repair software on them and maybe save some of the footage, although I haven't had a whole lot of luck with that. So let's take a look at a slightly larger pool of files. These .mov files are also video files, but since more devices shoot in this format, we have more of them. Here, Disk Drill found 165, EaseUs found 182, Stellar found 85, and Wondershare found 163. And at first, it looks like EaseUs has recovered way more data than the other programs, with 53 gigabytes of data in 182 files, while Stellar is only showing 11 gigabytes in 85 files. But again, we have to look at the quality of the files recovered. When I go through and sort out the recovered files that are still so corrupt that they won't actually open or play for more than a few seconds, the numbers are actually much more similar. EaseUs and Disk Drill drop from 165 and 182 down to only 92 files. Wondershare is also about the same, it gives us 91 working files, and Stellar is down at 80 files, totaling 11.2 gigabytes. Now looking at Stellar's recovery, 12 files fewer than the others seems like a pretty big difference, but again, it's not quite that simple. Some of these programs retained multiple copies of each video. For example, this video here, I only had one copy among my files recovered by Stellar, but there are two in the EaseUs data. The duplicates account for six of the missing files and 433 megabytes difference in volume. However, even with that taken into account, these six videos in the EaseUs recovered data are still missing from the Stellar folder. And this is a big one, about 1.2 gigabytes. This is one of my nieces about 10 years ago, and not something that I'd be happy to lose. So I also decided to track down the difference between the EaseUs files and the Wondershare, since there was one missing file there, and I was curious whether it was a duplicate file, but it wasn't. Wondershare didn't recover this video, which is a relatively large one, over two minutes long and over 200 megabytes. So Wondershare is running in second place here behind EaseUs and Disk Drill, which are tied. So let's take a quick look at a few other types of files. When it comes to Word documents in the docx format, again, EaseUs and Disk Drill were identical, but this time, Wondershare found three more, and Stellar found one fewer. However, three of the files that Wondershare found are too corrupt to open, and the remaining files are identical to those from Disk Drill and EaseUs. The missing file from Stellar is actually a duplicate, so probably no real loss there. I'd call this a four-way tie. Then I decided to look at MP3 files. This time, Disk Drill found the most files, but EaseUs recovered a slightly larger amount of data. Randomly playing through some of the files, I found that 
some of them don't play at all, and some of them played partially but were glitchy. Unfortunately, it wasn't practical for me to listen to 1700 songs to see which were good and which were not, so this is going to remain inconclusive. And finally, I decided to spend some more time checking out the Canon RAW files that each program recovered. There were 2300 files recovered in the best three cases, and 1863 in the worst, which is a significant difference, about 20%. I wanted to check and see if they were corrupt, and to do that, I had to generate large preview images, and I find that On1 Photo Raw is faster than Lightroom at that, so I used that to scroll through each image recovered by a disk drill. 2300 images are still quite a few, and required about an hour to mark all of the ones that had corruption visible in the previews. But in total, I found 101 of them. This means that Disk Drill still found about 2200 non-corrupt images, about 330 more than Stellar. And that was assuming that all of Stellar's raw files were not corrupt. But looking at the Stellar folder revealed that most of the corrupt images were also present there. So the big difference in performance in raw file recovery between Stellar and the other programs was not an illusion here. Stellar just wasn't as good at it. Now, some of these programs also included the ability to attempt to repair image files or videos. Unfortunately, I tried out all of the ones that were available to me on the thousands of corrupt files that I ended up with, and none of them gave me any successful results, at least almost none. So if you want to repair corrupt files after you recover your data, I'd recommend choosing repair programs separately based on their own merits, but also don't get your hopes too high. So considering all of this information, what can we conclude? Ultimately, I think we can conclude that all of these programs work pretty well, though some of them appear at first to recover a lot more data than others. But taking into consideration the quality of the data, Disk Drill seems to have been the best at recovering the most files from the categories that I looked at. But EaseUs and Wondershare were both very close behind, tied for second place, where EaseUs was slightly better at recovering video, and Wondershare a little bit better at recovering MP3s, maybe. Stellar was significantly behind in all of those categories. Disk Drill is the most expensive to get started with, unfortunately, but it's the cheapest for a lifetime license, and EaseUs is the most expensive over the long run. For most people, data recovery is a short-term issue, though, and Stellar is the cheapest. There are two huge caveats here. The first is that because of the amount of data involved and the lack of consistent file names, there wasn't any reasonable way for me to compare every type of file, even some important ones like JPEGs and MP3s. Furthermore, it's worth mentioning that Stellar recovered about 100 gigabytes of data in file types that the other three programs didn't even try to recover. So if you need a program to recover a more diverse collection of files, Stellar still might have an advantage. Notice that all of these selected file extensions on the left, which is Stellar, don't have any counterpart on the right, which is the EaseUs recovery drive. Still, if you're interested in recovering images, video, audio, and Office documents, Disk Drill comes out ahead as the winner for me. This is based on the results from a single formatted drive, just a sample size of one, so take that for what it's worth. If you have any questions about this process that I haven't answered here, just let me know in the comment section and I'll see what I can do to answer them. And that's it. I hope that none of you have to deal with this sort of thing, but if you do, I wish you luck. It's not fun. See you next time.